hustle culture is prioritizing productivity and prioritizing output and prioritizing revenue over all else. It's the it's the concept that like by pushing yourself to be the most productive, you will be the most valuable member of society uh, is, is the way I look at it. Now, I'm sure there's lots of different people who look at it different ways, but it is that productivity trap. You know, it's I, I watched myself, my wife, my friends, lots of different people fall into that trap of feeling like they were worthless if they weren't being productive. Rest was lazy taking care of yourself that in, in a way that wasn't like hitting the gym at 5 a.m. was lazy, right. you know, like that sort of thing. Welcome to another episode of the Wisdom and the Tangents podcast. I am your host, John Mansfield. Uh, this is a place for photographers and creative entrepreneurs where we get to have conversations. I have other professionals, business coaches, photographers, experts, all sorts of people on and uh, and we just have conversations. This is a, a, a comfortable, candid place where we talk about a certain topic and we often have tangents and as most conversations do. And occasionally there's some wisdom in those tangents. I would say most of the time, actually. And today I have a returning guest coming on the show, Dave Moss. He is a photographer and business coach up in Canada our neighbors to the north and uh, very far north for me. I am in Texas, so it is it's a good long drive. I loved having him on the show before episode 148, I believe is what we said in this episode. Probably should have double checked that before recording this, but you can figure it out. You can search on Spotify, which is amazing. Um, just search for Dave Moss and two will pop up. This one, episode 201 and the other one, probably 148. Um, but yeah. Is a great episode, a great conversation. We're talking about the rise and fall of hustle culture, how um, it kind of took everyone and like we just hustle, 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 hustled for so long. Um, and that's really hard to say three times fast. Uh, you should try it. See, wasn't as easy as you thought it was. Uh, but this is a really great episode. Great conversation. I'm going to let us get into it. Here is my conversation with Dave Moss. Dave. Welcome back to the podcast. Um, I'm very excited to have you back. Uh, as I was just saying before we like officially started recording, um, looked up the last time you were on the show, which was episode, I looked it up and then I totally forgot. 148, uh, you said. You are correct. <laughs> yes, 148, becoming a stronger entrepreneur by becoming a better version of yourself. Oh man, I need to go back and listen to that one again. Um, <laughs> that one was... That one was great. I love that. And I, I love uh, just hearing from you. I know like in your Facebook group, um, you know, you'll, you'll come on live every now and then and, and do a little, not so quite so much like podcast, but just kind of like talking yeah. and, uh, and some coaching and I just, uh, I, I, you always have great things to say. So I'm, uh, I'm glad to have you back on the show. And now I'm going to let you say hi. I'm just rambling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's, it's really exciting. This is, this is the only time I've ever done the same podcast twice. So it's, uh, nice. it's, 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 it's an experience for me too. But Sweet. I, I really enjoyed the time that we had last time. I've been enjoying the content you've been putting out. I finally like broke my... Uh, intense personal dislike of Instagram and have been back on there. And then I saw you on there and I started looking at your stuff again and yeah, we just reconnected. It was really great. Nice. Do you mind me asking what your personal dislike of Instagram was or possibly still is? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a personal dislike of social media as a whole. Um, not, I find it as a very effective tool for connection, for communication. I think the problem that I have with it is the gamification of it like yeah i i put out a, a reel and a tiktok and stuff the other day um talking about how i want creators to speak more put themselves out there show their faces out there and immediately after i got a uh, a dm from a friend who's um into marketing and stuff like that and she was laughing because she says right after i saw your reel 
I got this other reel for how you can use ChatGPT in Canva to create 100 faceless, like stock footage <laughs> reels in two minutes. And I'm like, that's the thing that I hate about it. And and especially Instagram over the last couple of the oh, years, it just feels like it's become a selling platform mm -hmm. instead of like a creation platform. And so yeah. that's just, that's the problem that I've had with it. Yeah, same here. I also don't like that. I, I like fell victim to it years ago of the like <clears throat> studying my insights and analytics and seeing, okay, what time of day on Wednesdays do like, are my followers active in here? And what, what's the optimal time for me to post and like, what should I be talking about? And I was like, I really just want to use social media to be social and build connections, mm -hmm. not so much the selling part. Like I'll share about what I sell, sell, sell. Um, I'll, I'll share about that, but I'm not going to be like, Hey, buy from me. Hey, this is this. And like all that, um, like that's what my website is for, for them to go and check out that. Like I, I view social media more as like a, a connection, which I used it a ton back in the like Facebook heyday of like, mm -hmm. 2008 2009 whenever i was uh was i still in college in 2009 i think i graduated in 2009 but i was like away from all of my high school friends and it was a good way for me to stay connected with them and we were it was back in the days of like uploading an entire catalog of photos from a road trip and just like terrible photos but everyone would just like go through and, and like and comment on each one and like there was that community to it that now facebook has changed into a lot of selling and yeah. instagram is kind of going that way too which is pushing me more toward tiktok and like Same. threads where <sighs> threads doesn't seem as salesy as uh as Instagram, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm with you there. It is, that is the downfall of social media. Like we should use it to be more social and less, um, as like a, I don't know, like a sales lot for all of our offers and just trying to like the, like you said, the gamification of it. Uh, it just takes a lot of the joy out of just getting on there and seeing what your friends are up to and, yeah. you know, looking through their stories and be like, Oh, you went to that brunch place. Cool. Yeah. I've been there. That was amazing. Did you try the chicken and waffles? You got to try the chicken and waffles. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah. That's so, the piece that I love is, is yeah. that just, just being able to see what my friends are up to. And now you have to fight through 19 sponsored posts and yeah. suggestions and everything else like that to, to get what you want. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. There's something new that I'm doing on the podcast. I say that every time, but it's been like months now. So I think people are used to it. Um, I, uh, I have like a few questions that I like to ask before we get into like, who is Dave Moss and like, what do you do and where are you based? But, um, but I guess the new thing is that I I've been asking listeners to provide some questions so I have one from Ibrahim and he asked, um, pineapple on pizza. What's your stance? Personally, I'm not, I'm a no pineapple on pizza. Um, okay. I like pineapple on some other things, but I don't know. I, any fruit sweet, sweet on pizza doesn't do well for me. Like there's a thing up here in Canada, um, an East coast donaire, um, and they do like a sweet garlic sauce and they do don mm. donair pizzas now with that sweet garlic sauce. I just can't do it. Like I need my pizzas to be like savory and like full of vegetables and just delicious things. And yeah, I I'm with you there. I like a good savory pizza unless it's like a breakfast pizza or something. And usually that's like not even tomato sauce. It's like a whole different thing. Uh, but yeah, for me personally, also no for the pep or no for the pepperoni. Absolutely not. <laughs> All of the pepperoni. Yes for the pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> yes for the pepperoni. Um, but yeah, I've had, I'm not a big fan of like hot fruit. Um, yeah. It's unless it's like in a pie or something. Although I did, I was in Minnesota. Uh, I was going to say a few years ago, it was like, uh, 
16 years ago. <laughs> and, um, and, and there was a place called, I think King's burger. Uh, and it was just like this little hole in the wall bar and grill type place. And they made, um, really like out of the, off off the wall kind of burgers so they had one that was like barbecue sauce with like a a pineapple ring on it and then you know a few other things that was very good and i have taken that back to texas and i will do that every now and then in the summer just like throw some pineapple on the grill um yeah we went to a brazilian steakhouse same thing like grilled pineapple Mm. so good Yeah. yeah yeah there's something different maybe grilled pineapple on pizza that might maybe it. maybe the problem is just putting it in the oven maybe that's the issue it might be maybe okay i'll i'll try it i will i'll give it a shot uh ibrahim i will i will throw some grilled pineapple on a pizza sometime and i'll tag you in it um but okay well sweet <laughs> now that we know your your pineapple stance um give us a little insight into uh who is dave moss what do you do where you're based Sure. Yeah. So I'm based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So just north of Montana for, for those who don't know Canadian geography. Um, (laughs) Most of us Americans, sadly. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, everybody knows where like Toronto and Vancouver is and stuff like that. I am a 14 hour drive east of Vancouver and a seven day drive west of Toronto. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm kind of in a place where most people don't know, but Banff, a lot of people know Banff. I I live 45 minutes away from Banff. So that's, that's my sort of claim to fame as far as uh, location and why people come and visit my wife and I, Um, and also ties a lot in to my background, who I am, what I do. Um, I've been a wedding photographer for 15 years. Uh, we're down to about five to 10 weddings a year these days because we have a bunch of other stuff that is going on. Um, we were going to fully retire. 2020 was going to be our last year. Um, and then everything got weird. Um, and then mm-hmm. as we were shooting out those last couple of COVID weddings after taking such a long break, uh, my wife who was dealing with Lyme disease for a lot of years and we didn't know just had chronic fatigue and other things. And so that was one of the reasons we were retiring because it was going to take her three years or three days to recover from every wedding. Um, So we finally figured out what was going on there, got her all sorted out. um, And then we started shooting weddings again, just a little bit and we both just fell back in love with it. So we're, we're unretired now, but still just, just doing a couple for fun and to like keep our finger on the pulse of the industry and stuff. Because the other thing that I do is I coach creatives, um, mostly photographers, but I've got some fashion designers, graphic designers, uh, other different types of, of people that I work with. I like creatives. We all think the same. Um, and I've gone through the gamut of for, for most of the last seven years, it's been strictly business coaching. Um, But over the last two years, it's really transformed more into um, mindset, growth, accountability. I kind of consider myself kind of like like a creative CEO whisperer now more than anything else like that. I want to help people from that perspective. Yeah, no, I love that title, too. It needs to be on your business card. Do we still do business cards? Um, Website. That's that's yeah. more more valuable than a business card, probably. Um, but yeah, creative CEO whisperer. I love it because um, uh, yeah, that I don't know. That speaks more to more more than just like coach because um, yeah. there's also a ton of coaches out there. Um, so many, yeah, <laughs> so so many coaches, and some of them I'm like, do you, but do you do you actually coach or do you just like? come on here and be like, you should think this way. Um, Yeah. Well, and I mean, like just tying back into the Instagram conversation we had earlier, I find so mm. many of the coaches are salespeople. They're not really good. They're they're creating eBooks or they're creating courses or guides or things like that. And they're just Uh. selling that it's mostly passive. I do my lion's share of work is, is one-on-one coaching. I have a weekly group coaching mastermind that I do with a group of professionals. Like that's the stuff that I really love. I have pre-recorded content and I, and I have all the rest of that, but like those offerings are very low cost. Like I have a $27 a month membership that's mostly recorded. But the thing that I love about that is I still do two live calls a month with the group and that's the thing that gets me going. So yeah, yeah I just, I don't, 
I would do it for free. Like I tell my clients all the time, if I didn't have a mortgage to pay, like I would still do this just because I love it so much. That's great. That's how, you know, it's like a calling. It is, it's what you're, what you're meant to do, what you actually love doing instead of like, I know I've, I, you know, uh, also coach creatives and, and photographers. And there was one that I was talking to recently and she was like, you know, I started photographing weddings because there's like good money in it. Um, but I don't really like it too much. I was like, you may not want to do that long term. Like, yeah, it might be good to like get some 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 money legs underneath underneath you to be able to like figure out what it is that you actually do enjoy doing. But yeah, the the you know I would do this for free because I just love it. Is yeah, that's how you know it's it's true. So um, but yeah, that's awesome. Okay quick quick little tangent uh as we do here <laughs> actually they're not not normally quick um <laughs> but how did you get into uh coaching and uh like mindset kind of stuff from wedding photography yeah so photographing weddings if this was 20 2017 uh we started, my wife and I started thinking about exit plans because her health was getting worse and worse. And we knew that we couldn't continue doing, you know, 25 to 40 weddings plus 30 portrait sessions, sunrise in the mountains. Like we're there's a lot of like 1 a.m. wake ups to drive out to the mountains for sunrise oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, it just was becoming less and less feasible. So we started looking for other things that we could do. She had already been training for years. Um, my wife, uh, her other business uh, is she does trauma healing. Um, so she's trained with neurolinguistic programming. She did a seven year, um, Chinese shamanic medicine and Qigong training. She has like, she just collects knowledge and she wants to help people get over their, their traumas. Yeah. But I didn't have a thing and I didn't know what it was going to be. Um, we went out, um, to British Columbia, the province next to us to, to photograph a couple who it was like a kind of an engagement session, but also just, they were, moving to Italy to get married and then they were going to live there for two years. And so it was kind of also a goodbye to their area of the world. Um, and we just got to talking with them and they were both coaches. And I was like, Oh, that's interesting. Uh, now they were relationship coaches, but I, I didn't really know at that time, like coaching was still pretty new to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I went home and I looked into some stuff and it didn't really click and I got distracted. Uh, and then we went for dinner with two other friends. Uh, and the it was this lovely couple. Um, one was a photographer. The other one was a coach. But I didn't know. It was our first time meeting her. And she talked about the program that she went through. And I'm like, that sounds like what I want to do because she was doing life coaching. Uh, and so I went and looked into the program and the next run of it started in two weeks um, and it was a fairly high ticket price to get into this program. Uh, uh, it was run by a woman named Martha Beck, who she's a multi-published author. She, you know, has her own podcast, which is also wild. She was Oprah's life coach. Uh, so she had some, some, some chops. She had some credentials behind her. She's a PhD sociologist taught in business school. And so I'm like, okay, this feels right because it's rooted in, in a lot of scientific principles, but it is also very emotional and very just sort of like feel your way through it. And I felt like at that time, that was something that I was missing. I was that logical person who would research everything mm -hmm. and very like no spirituality, no nothing. And so I'm like, that's it. That's going to fill a gap. And so let's take the program. It's a nine month program. We'll just see what happens and we'll go through it. And I was, I was hooked from day nice. one. So I did that. We had to get so many practicum hours in order to get like our certifications and stuff. So I did, um, I got 50 free coaching clients that I did, did like multiple coaching sessions a day over the course of course of months. And I'm like, this is it. This is, this is what I'm meant to be doing. And, and awesome. I think that's why I'm leaning back into more of the life coaching stuff now away from the business coaching stuff, because that's the reason why I got into it. And it's the stuff that I really love to unpack. Um, mm -hmm. The business stuff is great. You know, I know how to run a successful business and I can help people with it. But the thing that I've realized over the last seven years is the thing for most creatives that stops them from running a good business is them. It's not usually their talent. It's not usually their output. It's not usually how they run their business. It's usually the way they are sabotaging themselves. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was going to say kind of tying back to uh, the last time you were on the show where we talked about becoming a better business owner by becoming a better person yourself. It's like yeah. so much of your business's success is tied to you. 
and how healthy you are mentally, physically, all of that. Um, and, and actually like working on your mindset and working with a life coach, uh, working with a CEO whisperer, um, will, will help you like get into the place that you need to be so that you are sturdy and that, like, cause you are a lot of, a lot of the listeners, myself included, like we are solopreneurs. We are the one, we're the CEO, we're the whole board, uh, mm -hmm. making decisions for things. And if you are not healthy, if you don't have sturdy legs to push through and push your business forward, it's your business isn't going to, uh, be as successful as it could be. We all want more time in our life. I mean, think about it. It's one of the best seasonings. I can't imagine a shepherd's pie without some time. What was that? Oh, yeah. No, that makes more sense. Okay. <clears throat> we all want more time in our life. Time is finite. It's a construct. But what if I told you you could create your own time? Hey, not exactly, but pretty close. Since I've been using Imagine AI to edit my photos, I have gotten hours and hours of time back that I would have just been sitting in front of my computer, click, click, clicking away, editing all the photos. But now I can use those hours to work on my business, to bring in more leads, or for some leisure time playing Super Mario, trying to beat that one level that I can't. It's those freaking ghosts, they get me every time. Okay, so this is how it works. With Imagine AI, you upload your photos and it reads everything and learns how you took it from the raw files to the edited images. And it will learn to edit just like you. I've already uploaded over 16,000 images and every single catalog I get back is better than the next. If you want to get your time back and get your first 1,500 images edited for free, go to allheartphoto.com slash AI. That's allheartphoto.com slash AI and create more time. All right, now I'm hungry. I love that. I love that you're like leaning into that and, uh, and, and teaching and coaching there. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a new shift for me. Like I've really mm -hmm. been, I've been like, it's just kind of in the last three or four months that I've been shifting brand, starting to think about what I want to do more. And like you said, like we, for solo entrepreneurs, we are the CEO, but we're also the board. What I find with most solo entrepreneurs is they're very rarely the CEO. They're yes. more often than not the like grunt worker and they don't allow themselves to step into that. Like I'm a business owner position and make smart decisions on behalf of their company and themselves. And so that's something that I really, I'm trying to figure out how I turn that, <laughs> that into a platform. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of us, like we start off just kind of being scrappy and just yeah. we're, we're the grunt worker. We're doing whatever we can to, grow the business to where we can get more people in to pay us to do what we're doing and not so much the CEO kind of, uh, or what is, what is that saying? The, uh, like you need to spend time working in your business and not on your business. I think that's, that's really important and kind of ties in with the topic today of like hustle culture and how that has run rampant through the entrepreneurial world for I don't know. I, I feel like it was kind of getting started when I hit the scene like, you know, 12 years ago or so. Where, yeah. It's like the 2010s was really yeah. with when it hit. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like 2015, 2016, I remember it being just like, everything was hustle. Everything yeah. was, you know, get out there, keep working, you know, the, the saying kept being passed around and I s still see it every now and then in like Facebook groups of, you know, I left my, my nine to five to work 24 yeah. seven. And, uh, you know, what, I don't know, just like, what are, what is for, for maybe a few people who just are like, I don't really know what hustle culture is. I haven't seen that. Um, what is hustle culture? Yeah. So I think, I think hustle culture was born of, of two places. I think it was born for, from a one place where people just had these things that they were passionate about and they really wanted to do them and they really wanted to work on them. And they got so lit up by it that they would work 24 seven, you know, like when, when I quit my day job, I was already working a million hours because I had a full-time uh, engineering position that I used to be in. And then I would come home on the evenings and weekends and run a photo business with my wife. 
So when I quit my job, I just kept those hours because that's just I, what I knew. Um, I didn't know at the time that that was hustle culture, but it was. But hustle culture is prioritizing productivity and prioritizing output and prioritizing revenue over all else. It's the it's the concept that like by pushing yourself to be the most productive, you will be the most valuable member of society uh, is, is the way I look at it. Now, I'm sure there's lots of different people who look at it different ways, but it is that productivity trap. You know, it's, I, I watched myself, my wife, my friends, lots of different people fall into that trap of feeling like they were worthless if they weren't being productive. Rest was lazy taking care of yourself that in, in a way that wasn't like hitting the gym at 5 a.m. was lazy, right. you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, for years, any time that I would take rest and just like, you know, have a day off, you know, just taking off a Tuesday or something just uh, or or even just like sitting around, like if I wanted to watch a show, if I wanted to play some video games, it was like that guilt of but I could be doing this. I could be doing something else to be productive and move forward. And I know I took a lot of that kind of hustle culture mentality from my nine to five that I had before this. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I worked, let's see, I started the business 2013. So I did like a little bit over two years uh, of both nine to five plus photography and same, same as you. Once I left that job, I was just like, well, I need to fill all of these hours that I was working and I'll work on this and grow it faster. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it was something that like really quickly led to burnout to where I was not excited to go photograph weddings anymore. And I would just be like, well, I don't know. I was just at this venue like last week or two weeks ago and I'm just, I'm not feeling it. And uh, was definitely giving my clients subpar uh, what they paid for because mm -hmm. I was burnt out because I was hustling all the time. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a, it's a hard place because it's also like very um, celebrated uh, by by others of just like you know, looking back, it's almost like a celebration of what you went through. It's like, oh, well, I went through all of these years of just hustling and, you know, sleeping three hours a night so that I could do all of this work and then grow to a seven figure business. And now I can relax. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, to get out of that hustle mentality when it is still celebrated by a lot of people. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. And it's, it, it's infiltrated so many different places. Like, I think it's such a huge part of corporate culture now, like the, the number of times um, I've consulted for a different uh, number of different startups and tech companies and things like that. And like, I'll talk to their CEOs and they're saying, you know, why don't they, why don't my employees work as hard as me? You know, like I'm putting everything I have into this. And I said, well, what's their compensation if they work as hard as you? And they're like, well, they should just want to do it because it's meant to be. I'm like, this is your dream for them. This is a means to, you know, keeping food on their table, doing everything else like that. If you want it to be their dream too, you have to get them as excited as you are and then also put them on the same compensation path that you are. And it's really hard for them to understand that because CEOs are infiltrated with hustle culture, which then puts it into their companies. Um, I had a friend who was obsessed with the concept of FIRE, um, financial independence, retire early, uh, oh, yeah. which was this movement, especially on Reddit, of like young people retiring at 40. So just like grinding your 20s and your 30s out, living in like a one bedroom apartment, eating nothing, working, you know, side hustles, everything else like that so that you can retire when you're 40. And about two or three years ago, I started seeing the posts of people who had done that and were now a couple of years into their fire journey and talking about how they have no friends, they don't know how to build relationships, like all of the pillars of what make a good life 
are gone because you've just put everything into the grind, into work and into finances. And I get it. Finances are super, super important now more than ever. You know, job market sucks. Mm -hmm. Everything costs more than it ever did before. We still need to earn income. Like my my anti-hustle culture stuff is not about not <laughs> making a living for your family. Like I, right. I have three businesses. Like I, I, I hustle, um, but I balance it with other things. And that balance came for a very strong reason, uh, right around this time last year, in March of last year, uh, I fell into a deep depression from overwork and from burnout and from stress and not feeling like I was good enough and not hitting the numbers that I had wanted to set for myself and all the rest of this. And I actually uh, attempted suicide, thankfully, didn't work, um, got help, went to therapy, you know, all the rest of that. But like my burnout really burned out. And so I know what that feels like. And I know what that desperation for, you know, more income or a better life or not feeling productive and all the rest of that is. And I also know what the other side of that, like for most of last year, I was unable to work. Like I was just in recovery, trying to put the pieces of my life back together and my marriage back together and all the rest of that. And so I know what the cost is or what cost can be if you just continue to hustle forever. So that's why it like, I understand why it's lauded. I understand why people look at the people who hustle and are like, oh man, I just wanna be them. But I wanna start peeling the curtain back a little bit on some of that. And, and you know, yes, there are, there are stories of, of people who have gone from, you know, be, living an impoverished life to being millionaires because they worked really hard. And I, I laud that, but there are a lot more people who didn't make it. Yeah. Who, you know, it's that survivorship bias. And, and again, that's just something that I struggle with on social media is we talk about the winners, but very few people talk about the losers. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and thanks for sharing that about like your journey and everything with last year. Um, I think that's really important for people to hear. Uh, I think, you know, like you were saying with that on social media, where we, we see the highlight of everything mm -hmm. and we, we do like glorify those people who <clears throat> started with nothing, pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. They hustle, hustle, hustle. And now they're multimillionaires and they're teaching other people how to hustle and do all that. Um, and, and we see them, but a lot of times we don't see the person next door to us who has been hustling and just the, like the gears are not matching and it's just like they're, they're just slipping and falling over and over again as they're hustling and burning out and just like falling into depression. Um, last year, also very difficult for me. Um, we transitioned from my wife being stay at home primary parent to me being stay at home primary parent in the same time that a couple of my associates who were working with me were uh, not holding up their side of uh, the the contracts and all of that, which I was like putting out fires all over the place, which was very exhausting. And me being a recovering perfectionist was just like, like dagger after dagger into my heart of people just being like, we are not satisfied with what we got with all her photography. I'm like, no, like all I want is, you know, this is those weddings. I want this to be amazing, an amazing experience for them to look back on. And there were a good bit of people from 22 and 23 that were not. And that um, really did some emotional damage uh, for me. And uh and yeah, like the whole um, taking time, like you were saying, like making space to care for yourself. Um, I was not doing that. I was trying to hustle and put out these fires. I was also trying to hustle and like bring in more revenue because we were also losing tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, and then at the same time, parent three kids, two of which were not in school yet. And I was just like, it was, it was a lot. And I know that there's a lot of listeners out there that are probably in similar boats, um, you know, identifying with, uh, with both of our stories and uh, just feeling that kind of, well, if I don't hustle, how am I going to like be productive enough to get out of this rut? Um, 
do you have any suggestions or anything for them to like kind of be more productive without like working 24 seven? Yeah, I think you have to, you have to ask yourself two questions. One, what does productive mean? Because most of us don't actually have an answer to that. Um, when I asked myself that question and I realized that rest is productive, that was like a, you yeah. know, that, that concept, <laughs> you know, and how I sell it to my clients now, cause usually I'll say, you know, your rest is productive and they go, mm-hmm, sure, sure, oh, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But how I sell it to them is like, okay, think about, um, high performance athletes, right? Which, which I am definitely not one of, yeah. um, but you think about high performance <laughs> think athletes. Think of Dave Boss, high performance <laughs> yeah. athlete. <laughs> yeah. But like the... 20 years ago, the, a lot of the thinking around high performance athletes was train every single day, right? Like train the muscle, switch muscle groups, do things like that, but train every Mm. single day. Now they're actually talking about how rest days, your muscles actually have a better chance of growing and healing properly and getting stronger and the tendons knitting to the bone tighter and everything else like that. If you stop. Like if you actually give it time to rest and replenish and everything else like that. So if you can think of your rest as a way to then perform better, it can actually be huge. And so like for me, I, I, I block out the days of my week to do specific tasks. So Mondays is always business development. Tuesdays is always catch up, like catching up on emails, making sure my clients are all happy. Mm-hmm. Um, Thursdays are working on one of my other businesses, business is an adventure. Um, Friday is marketing day. Wednesday, Wednesday is life stuff day. So I literally like I'll, I'll vacuum our whole house. I'll, you know, clean, I'll do things. I'll go to Costco. I'll do all the rest. That is productive but for me the whole time i don't i often listen to i'm I'm an audiobook addict on wednesdays i don't listen to nonfiction stuff i'll listen to a sci-fi book or a fantasy book or you know whatever something else like that like everything i do on wednesdays Mm -hmm. is just about stepping away from work i play (laughs) i have a weekly dungeons and dragons game that i play with my friends they come over every wednesday night and we do that like wednesday is a break in the middle of the week that makes Monday and Tuesday better, but it also makes Thursday and Friday better. I'm not burnt out at the end of every week because I've been sprinting for four or five days every single time. And then I have a floater day that I just call learn because we all have days where you just can't be productive. And if you try to push it, it's never going to work. That's the grind. You know, that's the hustle and grind. Grind is not good. Grind wears you down. We don't want to grind. Yeah. If you think of gears and like how machines work, grinding is not a good thing. That's yeah. when you're like, oh, hit the emergency stop button. We need to figure out what's going on. What's grinding in there. This is this is not yeah. helpful. Uh, yeah. So now I swap a learn day in once like if if I have a day that I can't focus, I'll just swap mm-hmm. it out for learn day and I'll go and watch a course that I bought that I never got around to watching or as we you know, all have book or whatever. <laughs> yeah, everybody has them. Yeah. Um, so so that's the, the that's the first thing to figure out is what is productive to you. The second thing that I think you have to ask for is what's the cost? Because everything has a cost. Me putting the cost of wanting to have multiple six figures or seven figure businesses had a cost that ended up being me almost losing my life. Me wanting to to hustle and be known for everything and have, you know, podcasts and speak on stages and do all the rest of that had the cost of, you know, I was spending less and less and less time with my wife. I don't even have kids. Like I was just spending less time with my wife, let yeah. alone the rest of my family. And so we had to repair all of that. Like ask yourself what the cost of what you are doing is. And then on the inverse of that, what do you get out of it? Like, what are you working so hard for? Do you want to have financial security for your family? Great. What does that actually look like? Do you just want to have all of your bills paid and have enough left over so you can go on a couple of vacations a year? Do you want to have multiple properties? What's the purpose of having those multiple? Like, you got to figure it out. Don't just be chasing a dream. Actually know what you're going after. Otherwise, you're just running through the forest with a blindfold on and eventually you're going to hit a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Statistically. Probably sooner rather than later. Probably sooner Uh, rather than later. Yeah. I mean, I will watch you run through a forest with a blindfold on. (laughs) But I don't want to do that I'll myself. Do, I'll do it for a TikTok sometime. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, and then you'll go viral for that. And everyone's like, all right, Dave, when are you going to run blindfolded somewhere else? Um, but no, I think that's, I mean, having that 
um, like naming something, like you said, like having those goals instead of just, I want financial, financial insecurity. I want financial security. Um, that like, these are buzzwords that we hear and that a lot of kind of the, the TikTok coaches and the people that are just like, here, go, go get this, you know, PDF of these five things to get closer to, uh, financial security. It's like, but what does that look like for you? Because financial security for you, Dave, looks different than it does for me, John. Yeah. Because we have different lives. We live in different places. We you know, have different families. Like I we're we're renting here. We're uh not set on like living in this town. We may move. We don't know. And uh and like we have, it's something that my wife and I have been trying to do over this last year is really put numbers down to what is like financial freedom look like and what are the steps that we can take, like baby steps or leaps or whatever we have capacity of doing right now to get there. And I think that being able to just sit down even for just like 15 minutes one day uh, and, and just say like for my business, what am I reaching for? What am I going toward? Do I, am I just photographing weddings and I, I am wanting to, to get to a certain level to where people are paying me 15, 20 K per wedding. I was like, okay, if that's what you're wanting, what steps do you need to take? to get there and uh and then also tying in the rest that you were talking about earlier because that has been a, a huge uh huge hurdle for me personally is like actually taking rest and uh like we uh this past weekend as we were recording this my wife and i went to seattle it was our anniversary weekend and that was where we wanted to go for our honeymoon but it's january so we were, we were like, ah, we'll go to Cancun instead. Um, also, my parents were like, if you go to Cancun, we'll pay. And we we're like, that <laughs> a f- a deal. <laughs> free beach sounds better than, you know, gloomy Seattle that we have to pay, pay for. Um, but this was kind of fun because we got to go kind of experience Seattle in January, what we would have had 11 years ago had we had done that. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was definitely not as warm as uh, a, a beach in Mexico, but, um, but that rest, like I was very intentional about, I'm bringing my laptop because I know that I have like a couple things that I'll probably have to do on Monday. But other than that, I'm not going to be posting on social media. I'm not going to be, you know, in there, like, you know, actively marketing in different ways or going through, uh, my long to-do list of, of stuff that I need to do for the business. And, uh, and those, those few days of rest were great. And I feel so much more, um, energized and invigorated to go like do the things that I probably would have done had I not set those boundaries of rest over, uh, the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild how we all just get caught up so much in what we're doing that we don't think to stop or we, or we don't can't find the ability to stop. Like I had these, Mm. uh, this, this amazing couple who came to me a couple years ago for coaching. They, they had for all intents and purposes, a a fairly successful wedding photography business. You know, they were over that six figure mark. They were getting the clients that they wanted to get, but they just felt like they needed more because that's what they kept hearing. You know, like every listicle, every Instagram post, everything in the wedding industry was, you know, more, more, more. And so they're like, okay, let's get a coach. We worked on their wedding business for maybe about three months. And I started to notice that their hearts weren't in it. I started to notice that this isn't what they wanted to do. And so I started asking those questions. I was like, is this actually what you want to do? Like, you know, the, the husband kept talking about like commercial stuff and sports and event photography that wasn't weddings. And and the the wife was so, so focused on like, I just love the systems and spreadsheets and CRMs and everything mm-hmm. else. Neither of them loved doing wedding photography, you know, jump 
cut two years later, uh, the wife is now running a business that helps set up automations and systems for photographers. Uh, the husband's going to photograph the Super Bowl. He now is a photographer for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was in Baltimore last week for that game. He gets to go nice. to the Super Bowl next week. He's a photographer for the WPGA Tour. He's a photographer for Iron Man. Like he gets flown all around the world to shoot these events in a documentary fashion in the way that he loves to work. But like he never would have got that if he never had the time to sit back and answer those questions of like, what's the cost? What am I doing this for? And like, is this actually a healthy decision that I'm making or am I just running so I can run? Yeah. Yeah. Running so you can run. I think that is, I mean, uh, uh, for listeners, like that is, uh, take that from this conversation if you if you don't take anything else like figure out what it is that you're doing like are you just running to run or you know uh you know having i i think that's that's so important just like you were able to give them that time of like rest and reflection of is this what you actually want to do when if you're just hustling through and you're like, we'll be our wedding photographers. This is what we do. And this is what we've been doing. Like I've been photographing weddings, uh, for, uh, going on 12 years now. And it's something that I'm probably going to pivot out of in the next couple of years. And I'm already setting things up to allow me to do that. Um, because I do still have a heart for it, but for my lifestyle with like my oldest is nine and he's playing baseball this uh, spring and played last spring. And thankfully I was able to make uh, all the games, but like a lot of the practices Saturday mornings, I'm like, can't do, can't do Saturday morning. I have a wedding and <laughs> like needing to, or wanting to like pivot my business to fit the lifestyle that I'm wanting. And that wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have been able to figure out that without slow times to rest specific times to like assess what I'm doing. And is this what I want to be doing or am I just running to run? Uh, so I think that is super helpful. Um, do you have any last words for the listeners or anything else you want to kind of touch on this hustle culture, rest, and all of that? It's one of those things. It's like, it's really hard to <laughs> tie up something so complex because right. I've really realized that everybody's journey is so completely unique in, in what they're doing. But like, just talk to people about it. Like talk to, talk to your peers, talk to your colleagues, talk to your therapist, talk to a coach talk to your priest, like, I don't care. But like, if you are feeling like you are just running to run, like you don't know what your direction is and you don't know what to do, don't bottle it. It's not going to get better. Um, <laughs> don't go and read a million books on grit and drive and hustle and everything else like that. It's not going to get any better. Just talk it out and really be vulnerable and open and get it off your chest and be prepared to listen to what people have to say. A lot of the time, I'm using a lot of forest analogies, but a lot of the times we can't see the forest for the trees when we're in it, right? Like, mm -hmm. we, especially we if we're blindfolded, especially if we're blindfolded. <laughs> yeah. But like, we, we can't see the things that our, our friends, our family, um, you know, professionals, everything else like that can see. So if you are feeling like you are struggling, I mean, for God, just DM me on Instagram. I'll have a conversation with you about it if you don't know who you can talk to. But if you're feeling, like a struggle don't mm -hmm. keep struggling because yeah. eventually you won't have the energy to keep struggling and then what yeah yeah and that's i mean i'm a huge advocate for community and i talk about that almost every episode people are probably sick of hearing it by now but um <laughs> but it's it so, important. so important and yeah and yeah like having community even if it's just one or two other people like i i host a local photographer get together once a month, we just go grab a drink and hang out and we just talk. And sometimes we talk business. Sometimes we don't. A lot of times we don't. And it's just like we are we're working by ourselves mostly. So we don't have like coworkers that we can like chat to and like, you know, how was your weekend and all of that kind of stuff. So like having that community 
with other people who are also kind of going through a lot of the same stuff, most likely, is super helpful. So uh, if you don't have a community near you, start one. There was not one here. Uh, I moved here and I was like, oh, there's no like rising tide society. There's no get togethers. There's nothing here. Um, I was like, okay, I can, I can host something where we're not like, I'm not teaching anything. We're just getting together and having a drink. Um, and it's been eight years of that now. And some of my closest friends are part of that group. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I think that was a great uh, yeah, like you said, kind of hard to like wrap up this whole conversation, but that's a, a great way to do it. I think, uh, I think that's super, super important. Um, but yeah, man, Dave, this was so good. Um, before we kind of wrap up, uh, let people know where you are and how they can get a hold of you. Um, there's something that I like to do where we talk about what we're loving this week. And I think we did this, I think I've been doing this for a while. So I think, when you were on last time, we talked about this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what are you loving last or what are you loving this week? Uh, so this week it's kind of ties into what we've just been talking about. I've been thinking a lot about the concept of third places. Um, mm. so third places for those of you who don't know, it's not home and it's not work. It's somewhere else you can go and you have a community and you can create connection. Um, the traditional definition of third place is a place where there's no work being done and traditionally no alcohol, but you know, if you want to go have a beer, go have a beer. Um, cause it's something that a lot of people don't have anymore. Um, mm-hmm. especially as like more and more people are leaving churches and different things like that. Third places are hard. Uh, Starbucks originally built their whole business model on being a third place, which is really interesting. That's cool. Um, uh, but yeah, that's something that I've been, I've been interesting in, uh, interested in and thinking about like, is there a way that I could create a third place in my life that also fosters like more growth in the people that I care about and, and, growing in that way so still still very early phases on into something like that um but yeah nice. that's what i'm interested you, in have you like set a location and stuff like that or still in the the early phases of St- still super in the early fa- phases you know it's it's funny because my first instinct is to make our house the third place for other people because we don't have kids because we have like we bought a we bought a big house because we like to fill it with people. We like to have people come and stay with us, you know, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. And so I saw a TikTok recently from this guy who every Sunday morning turns his house into a coffee shop for all of his friends because he loves being like a little at-home barista. He's got two espresso makers, things like that. Yeah. So he just sets it up. He, he puts a, a menu board up of here are the coffee drinks I'm making today. People bring, you know, croissants and cookies and things. And then they all just come out and hang out like it's a coffee shop. So... I pitched that That's idea fun. to my wife and she's into it. So we, we nice. might turn our house into a coffee shop this weekend. We'll see. That would be cool. Yeah. I like that idea. I I like, you know, y'all seem like y'all are very like good hosts also that you enjoy inviting people yeah. in. My wife and I are the same where we just, we love, that's why we chose this house over some others because this has like a nice little backyard and patio. It's got a big living area. That's kind of open space or open concept that we're like, we feel like we can fit more people in here and we can comfortably invite people over. And we've been able to do that since we've been here the last six months. Uh, but yeah, no, that'll be fun. That'll be, yeah. that'll be cool. Um, I love a good third place and in meeting up somewhere. That was something that concept I had not heard of until we were in our, our old church in Austin, Texas, where uh, we led a small group, which we would invite people to our place for like Bible study and like get together. But then we had a third place where we can invite other people who weren't part of our group to just like mm. meet up and, and be friends. And, uh, and like that third kind of middle ground, it's a neutral zone for everyone uh, to go. So I love that. Um, and uh, yeah. That's that's exciting, and I I love the idea of like turning your house into a coffee shop. It's fun. Um, for me, I am loving. I've been watching a lot of shows over this kind of like slow wedding season. Um, as I'm editing, or as I'm just kind of, you know, we've we've had sick kids for like a month now. We had to reschedule <laughs> this podcast because um, my youngest was sick. And now she's back in school, but now my middle 
is sick and out there and she's been great she's gone through two podcasts today so she's doing amazing um plus my wife is working from home today so she's been checking in on her but um but yeah because that there have been a lot of couch snuggles while they're watching like gabby's dollhouse and stuff and i'll just like hold up my phone (laughs) and watch whatever (laughs) i want to and um one of the things that I watched was on a prime video called promising young woman and a really interesting concept of this lady who uh, would go to bars and just kind of like act really tipsy. And then, you know, the, the nice guy would come over and offer to like take her back to her place or go get her a cab or like, Oh no, I'll just drive you or whatever. And then a lot of times they would, not be so nice and then she would just like snap out of the 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 fake drunk and just be like what are you doing right now and they freak out um but uh but is is really interesting uh movie um uh carrie mulligan uh it was great and uh bo burnham uh the the comedian uh which probably most people know for his 2020 uh inside where he filmed everything inside his little studio apartment. Uh, he's uh, one of the the main characters or supporting characters. Uh, but yeah, it was really good. It, it was an interesting show and I liked it. And the ending was not what I was expecting. So I always like those movies where I'm like, didn't see that. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. I put it on my uh, list. I keep a note okay, of sweet. all the things that people recommend for me to watch. Cause we always Same. like, we'll, we'll go down for cut- cuddle time and we're like, what do you want to watch? I don't know. So now I have a list on my phone of like movies, TV, documentaries, like everything. It's like pick it, pick a genre, and I have something. Oh yeah, yeah. I have started doing that uh, in my notes app. I just have <laughs> it's like recommendations, and then I'm like, yeah. oh, and then I'll just like once I watch it and I like it, I'm like copy that over to my notes app for what I'm loving this week. Uh, but well, sweet. Well, Dave, thanks again for being on the show. Where can people find you? Where can they follow along and, and check out all the stuff that you're doing? Yeah, I'm just I'm Dave Moss coach everywhere. So da- at Dave Moss coach on TikTok, at Dave Moss coach on Instagram, Dave Moss coach dot com. I try to keep it really simple so that I'm easy to find. That is helpful. That is yeah. that's good. It's always like that wasn't something that I thought of early on with like all these places need to be cohesive. So like my Facebook was something else and like Twitter was a whole different thing. And then I stopped doing that. Um, but yeah, cool. Dave Moss coach. I will have all of those, uh, linked in the, in the show notes for everyone so they can go, uh, go say, Hey, and, uh, Mm -hmm. and, and shoot you a DM, uh, if, if they want to, but, um, but yeah, well, thanks thanks so much for having me, man. This was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming back for a second time. Yeah. Um, this is fun. You're going to be, you got one show in the, the one hundreds. This is going to be somewhere in the two hundreds episodes. So, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's fun. We'll have you back maybe before three hundreds. That seems like <laughs> yeah, a long let's... time from now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll but, see how it goes. Uh, oh, also, also, cause this is, uh, this is going to go live in a few weeks. Uh, plug your podcast. What's your, tell us about your podcast. Just, just a little bit. I want people. Oh to yeah. Listen. So the first episode comes out tomorrow. It went through a few iterations in my brain. Uh, I originally started recording it last year. I recorded 10 episodes kind of knew before I knew what it was going to be about. All I had was the name of it. Uh, and then I wanted to talk to people, but something that I have always been is curious. I have a million ideas. I jump through a million hobbies. I've had a million jobs. I'm curious about a lot of things. Um, And I know that other people are too. So the premise of the podcast is I'm talking to a wide range of people about things that they are good at that have allowed them to inject, you know, their their businesses are different. So uh, I talked to a photographer who went to school for philosophy and rhetoric and is just probably one of the most amazing conversationalists I have have ever met. And he uses that with his clients. Uh, I talked to another woman who uh, was slash is a photographer, but is also now an author and a body positivity rights activist and how that like tied into her boudoir work and and other things. And so um, it's me being curious about people and then what they're curious about and having those conversations and about how like we are 
we are the sum of all of our parts. You know, it's like we I think we often try to hide ourselves and I have to be professional or I have to be a wedding photographer. or I have to be this. And mm-hmm. life is way more interesting when you let all of that go. Like when I started talking about my depression or Dungeons and Dragons or like all sorts of other weird things. It's amazing the connection that that created. So. That's, oh, yeah. yeah. The amount of people that whenever I mention something about like watching a, a horror movie or that I love like that horror genre and Halloween and all that, the amount of people that just like came out of the woodworks of just like, yes, me too. I also love this. Have you seen this movie? I was like, I had no idea I needed to talk about this, but this is amazing. Uh, so, well, that's cool. I am very excited. And um, it's called So Damn Curious, correct? Yes. So I didn't say the name. Yes. So so damn curious. Uh, uh, Again. uh, So I'm going to link to it from my Dave Moss coach uh, profiles, but I have also made a so damn curious on TikTok and Instagram where clips will be going up because, you know, I need to have more places that I'm spending time online. Um, But (laughs) (laughs) yeah, it's, it's so damn curious. I'd love to have you, you there on some time. And like the thing that I love about it is anybody can be on it because like, I would love to talk to, somebody who's like an accountant where somehow their kite surfing hobby has like influenced their life or whatever. So I'm just going to follow my own curiosity and then have conversations with people they're curious about. That is amazing. I am very excited to listen. I mean, just the few that you've already talked about, I'm excited about those and just like the, yeah, the possibilities is, yeah. is so great. And I would love to be on your show. Uh, yeah, I am very curious about many things. So this will be, it'll be fun. Awesome. But, uh, but yeah, well, thanks for coming back on again. And uh, I really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks for listening to another episode of the wisdom and the tangents podcast. As always, you can check out all the show notes at podcast.allheartphoto.com. And be sure to follow us on social media. The podcast is at wit.pod on Instagram. I'm at allheartphoto. Dave is at Dave Moss Coach. So uh, give us a follow. Let you let us know what you thought about the show. And uh, yeah, we'll be back here same time next week for another great episode let's see next week we have kt mary is going to be on the show and we're talking about how you can use your business as a powerful force for good another amazing conversation uh so tune in next week for kt mary and until then i I guess have a good week i don't know i'm probably i'm not gonna see you until then uh but yeah until then have a great week i'll see you later bye (laughs) y'all